So hello everybody. This is a presentation on uh, the Black-Scholes equation, um, and basically um, we're going to go um, through some of these slides so you have a, a better understanding of uh, of what the Black-Scholes equation was all about. Okay, so um, a little bit history. Um, this uh, basically this breakthrough development it happened in uh, 1973, and uh, Myron Scholes and uh, Fisher Black finally solved the long-standing problem of risk and return in the stock market. And um, they used an, it was an elegant mathematical formula, and they created a multi-trillion-dollar um, options industry. And um, there's a great movie as I mentioned to you already, and it's called uh, Trillion Dollar Bet. And what they were able to do is they were able to realize if you take two risky positions together and you can effectively eliminate risk itself. And once the, it was important to eliminate risk because how does one judge what um, someone's risk level is and what their risk tolerance? That's very subjective for um, different people. So um, basically uh, that was something that had to be solved. All right, so going back to the history a little bit, there was basically one golden rule of capitalism, and everyone probably should know what that is now. If you want to make money, you have to take risks, highlighted in red. And the Black-Scholes pricing model was a way that they used to conquer risk. Okay, so there's this um, battle and I'll use the word battle, um, among economists and many other people, even the average person, who don't agree on whether success in the uh, stock market is either sheer luck or skill. And it goes on, and in my opinion, it's a little bit of uh, luck and a little bit of skill. But um, there are uh, professionals who feel that they've got the skill, and that's how you make money in the market. All right, so the question then became, um, could um, the uh, traders said there's no way that um, you could do anything mathematically with models. So the question was, could economists use these theories of probability and models um, and basically eliminate that risk? And really what they, it came down to was, um, could statistics help understand and predict um, stock market prices? So a little history now as we, we go back, and basically this goes back um, before Black and Scholes, there was a gentleman whose name was Louis Bachelier, and uh, he uh, basically was doing a, a PhD thesis on um, speculation in the markets, and uh, in the 1930s he uh, wrote this, uh, this doctoral thesis. And he really created the first mathematical model of uh, stock market fluctuations. And, uh, and he had this obscure contract that he came up with called an option. Now, he used the, concept, the concepts of probability and Brownian motion uh, to figure out um, how to price them. The only problem was um, it was a thesis. There were no option markets at the time. And basically, he um, had to um, settle for... Um, his uh, thesis, and uh, they put it on the shelf, and his work pretty much went um, really not noticed, and it faded away, and he, I think he became a college professor. But you can clearly see he lived for 76 years in France, but a lot of the um, work um, from Black and Scholes owes its, uh, you know, lends itself to what originally um, Louis Bachelier did. And I don't know if this will open, but I'll show you some stuff here. And you can see, uh, this was on, the, on in 2000, on the centenary of the theory of speculation. I guess that's in French, right? That's in French. And here's all the, particip here's all the participants. And uh, the date, uh, March 29, 1900, should be considered as the birth date of mathematical finance. On that day, a French postgraduate student successfully defended at the Sorbonne his thesis, Theory de la Speculation. As a work of exceptional merit, 
strongly supported by Henri Poncar, Bachelier supervisor. It was published in Annals Scientifique de l'École Normale Supérieure, one of the most influential French um, scientific journals. So um, basically, you can see the, uh, these, his thesis, together with his subsequent works, deeply influenced the whole uh, development of uh, stochastic calculus and mathematical finance. Again, uh, he used Brownian motion, I believe, before Albert Einstein did. And they actually created an international Bachelier financial society. But anyway, I thought you might be interested in uh, seeing this. So, so this is Louis Bachelier here. It's his picture. Let's see if we can go ahead. All right. So, it then became uh, it then became obvious that um, his model wasn't exactly perfect. So they realized that at some point, um, um, options were going to be a great financial instrument. And they needed a way to evaluate and come up with a formula, a closed form solution to a formula for options. And they wanted this because this, if they can come up with this, it would protect any stock market positions. But the big question was how much should an investor pay for this option, right? The premium, which we've talked about, right? And prior to Black and Scholes, there was no pricing standard because uh, they didn't, they weren't able to get the risk out at that point. All right, so um, Basha, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Black Scholes um, proceeded, and uh, first of all, they had to use um, a European option, which is what we kind of talked about already, right? Because the mathematics lended itself a lot easier to a, a European option, and uh, that to value an option, they needed the stock price, uh, and so what they needed was the underlying stock price, the volatility, the strike price, the contract length, the interest rate, and the riskiness of the option. So, as you can see, as I mentioned previously, they were all measurable, right? Except for one, the riskiness of the option. So, if you can't measure it, the only way to deal with it is make it less significant, less significant or otherwise get rid of it. And what they did was they created a theoretical portfolio, and they used this concept um, of dynamic hedging, and this was a mixture of stocks and options. And when one moved in one direction, the other uh, moved in the opposite direction, and it canceled the risk. And as I said in big blue letters here, they used the concept of dynamic hedge hedging, and that dropped the risk out of the equation, and they were in business, ready for a Nobel Prize. So the quest was over, and in 1973, the option market was uh, was unleashed, and it became a trillion dollar market. Okay, so um, the way it turned out was their equation was a way to determine how much a call or a put is worth by simply solving this equation, and they used the concept of uh, payoff being replicated by buying the underlying stock and borrowing to pay for part of that the stock purchase, basically with a bond. So here's, um, again, here's um, Myron Scholes, and here's Fisher Black. And as you can see here, uh, these are the two guys. They, it took them 25 years to win the Nobel Prize. The sad part about it is uh, Fisher Black passed away before the Nobel Prize was offered, so um, he didn't get it. So if you die before the uh, Nobel Prize um, is presented, you don't get it. Um, so unfortunately, he didn't get it. But they gave it to another gentleman with Myron Scholes named Robert Merton because he basically um, he basically helped with the uh, stochastic calculus. And you can see uh, it, was an, it was a model. And obviously, it has to be no arbitrage, right, or the model ain't going to work. And it's for, it was for European style call options on stocks. It was a it was a pretty basic model. All right, so here's the assumptions surrounding the model. Uh, interest rates are constant, and in the original paper which I have, 
I'm willing to give it. If you want a copy of the original paper, let me know. Options are European. No dividends are paid on the underlying. And there's uh, no transaction costs. So here's all the assumptions for the um, volatility, right, for the um, European option. And all these went into the uh, the, pr the pricing. You'll notice there is a, there's no risk here. You'll notice there's no risk. And um, the uh, original model spawned other models. Then they really started taking off. They came up with models on the American style option, analytical, numerical, and they had generalizations to these models. So the in, uh, the Black Shoals option model um, spawned um, a whole industry of models. And uh, you can see here, Here's an option. Here's a family tree I kind of put together. Here's Bauchalier in 1900, right? Here's Bauchalier. And here is, uh, here's the Black Shoals model. These guys, uh, Samuelson and Bonus and Sprinkle, kind of got close, but uh, never achieved uh, the fame. The, the Nobel Prize in economics went to Black and Shoals. And, uh, but no, I'm sorry, not to, not to Black. And also Merton. You see Merton here? Robert Merton, well, he got it with Scholes. So you can clearly see here all the different models, and this only goes up to 95. So in the last uh, 20 years, I'm sure there's a lot of other models. You can see extensions, generalizations. All right, so this is called the partial differential equation. For some of you people who know uh, dynamic equations, from calculus if you don't don't worry about it and the whole the job um for um, black shoals and merton was to solve for c c was the um, premium on the call option right c stands for call premium you see option value or price so they had to solve this equation for c right so um so and, and here's everything else to find here's time to expiration here's the volatility and i showed you some of this in my spreadsheet Okay, so here it is. Here's the, um, and I highlighted it in two blue boxes. Here is the Black Shoals um, uh, Nobel Prize winning formula for a call option. So as I said, um, this is the uh, Black Shoals equation for the uh, valuation of a, call, uh, of a call option premium. Again, it's European option, right? And all they do is take the stock price here, right? S is the stock price. And this is a term for the normal distribution, which takes into account the volatility. Okay, this is the volatility of uh, the uh, and and the time to expiration is all built into this. And I'll show you what D1 is. You calculate D1, and then you get the uh, use Microsoft Excel to get the normal distribution. Here's the strike price. They use E, and uh, they bring this back to the present because the stock price is at the present. So you got to bring the strike price right back to the present, what the strike price is worth today. So they use a continuous compounding formula with the amount of time to expiration, and here is the risk-free rate. If you're not familiar with the exponential function, um, it's in uh, Microsoft Excel. We'll go over that. And finally, you take this term here and multiply it by a, another normal distribution probability. So we calculate D1 and D2. So the whole thing is one multiplication here, a subtraction, a multiplication here and then another multiplication and we're cooking okay so um so so this is it this this got them a million bucks this equation but it was the idea at the time you know and here's the black shoals equation for a put option very similar as you can see so this gave you the put option equation here to get the value of a put option and i showed you in excel these were programmed in microsoft excel and basically what the uh, models say is that you could combine options and underlying shares to form a portfolio that is riskless. Okay, you have no, it's a riskless portfolio. So it can be, cre uh, this riskless hedge can be created out of positions and the option and shares of the underlying stock. And we'll go over this uh, some more next week. And again, here's the equation and I call out each item here. And I call out each item. And um, for simplicity, and um, and you'll notice um, the risk-free interest rate is included right there, because basically it's, there's no arbitrage, right? 
and it should reflect the income that would have um, been earned had you invested the premium uh, in a, you paid in the bank, right? And it's basically risk-free because there's no arbitrage. There's no risk, right? We already talked. We removed the risk. Okay, so here's the D1 and D2 equations. So after we calculate these, you notice here's time and here's the volatility. After we calculate these, okay, this is like standard, uh, uh, basically, um, here's the standard deviation. There's the, um, this is the um, standard deviation, the volatility, right? And here is the volatility. And basically, you, once you get D1 and D2, you will use the uh, normal distribution in Microsoft Excel to get ND1 and ND2. Okay, so um, here, uh, here is the uh, terms. Here I am breaking down the terms. And uh, it should become very obvious that when time runs out, when time runs out, this goes to 1. And basically, um, that goes to 1. And basically, this uh, goes to 1. And this goes to 1. And eventually, what you're left with is C equals s minus e or k and that's the intrinsic value so here you can start seeing the um, volatility and the time value coming in that we previously talked about okay so um i guess i'll leave it off here now and i'll uh and we'll pick it up um after this slide i think there's enough here that i went over